This is a review of the basic concepts of the nephron. So the nephron is composed of Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. The structures of the nephron are contained in the cortex of the kidney and the medulla of the kidney. The nephron function is to filter and regulate the blood. So the blood supply entering the nephron is the afferent arterial which ends in a tuft of capillaries called the glomerulus. From the glomerulus, the blood supply continues past the glomerulus through the efferent arterial and then surrounds the nephron through the peritubular capillaries. The first process of blood regulation happens at the renal corpuscle, which is the glomerulus plus Bowman's capsule. So the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule together is the location of glomerular filtration. Glomerular filtration is the process of separating large blood cells and proteins from small molecules and fluid. Glomerular filtration is regulated by the myogenic contraction of the afferent arterial, which is the myogenic mechanism, by tubuloglomerular feedback, at the juxtaglomerular apparatus, and by the sympathetic nervous system. Any of these processes which lead to vasoconstriction or tightening of the afferent arterial will decrease GFR. So vasoconstriction at the afferent arterial will decrease GFR. The opposite is also true. Vasodilation, or opening up of the afferent arterial, will increase GFR, or the glomerular filtration rate. This is also driven by the net filtration pressure between the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Once the filtrate enters Bowman's capsule, it will pass into the proximal convoluted tubule. The filtrate will now be small molecules and fluid. The large proteins and blood cells will stay behind in the blood supply. They are necessary substances that are too big to pass through the filtration membrane. But the small molecules and fluids are also necessary substances and many of them need to now be returned back to the blood. This is a process called reabsorption. 
reabsorption is the movement of substances from the filtrate back to the blood. And this is regulated by channels that are present to specifically allow substances to pass from the tubule cells to the peritubular capillaries. So the number of channels present determines the maximum amount of transport, or the Tmax. If you have a lot of channels for a particular substance, then you can get a lot of reabsorption of that particular substance. If you have very few channels of that substance, then very little reabsorption will happen, and most of that substance will continue on to be eliminated. Most reabsorption happens in the proximal convoluted tubule immediately after filtration. So filtration happens at the glomerular filtration membrane between the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. The majority of reabsorption happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. That reabsorption includes sodium, water, nutrients such as glucose, other lipid soluble substances who do not, which can pass the membrane, which do not need specific carriers such as urea, and other ions. All of these substances will be returned to the blood through selective channels in the proximal convoluted tubule. After the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct will then concentrate and reabsorb only sodium, water, and some other ions. Most importantly, the loop of Henle sets up a gradient in order to provide this reabsorption. That gradient is going from isoosmotic in the cortex to more and more concentrated as you move deeper down into the medulla, up to 1200 milliosmolar. This occurs because the loop of Henle in the ascending limb has sodium chloride channels that allow sodium to exit the tubules and concentrate in the medulla. The descending limb has water channels that allow water to leave and will provide the concentrated sodium filtrate which allows the sodium to leave through these channels in the ascending limb. All of this happens because there are also specialized blood vessels surrounding the loop of Henle called the vasa recta. The vasa recta help to circulate the sodium chloride and the water such that this gradient will be maintained. So this is a very important gradient located in the medulla of the kidney. Once that gradient is established, it can be used by the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. In particular, the collecting duct is subject to hormonal control. And that hormonal control adds channels to the collecting duct so that the fluid in the filtrate can equilibrate with the concentrated fluid in the medulla. 
those hormones are ADH, which increases aquaporins and allows water to leave. That water will leave and go directly to the peritubular capillaries where water will be retained in the blood. It is also regulated by aldosterone, which will increase sodium and sodium potassium pumps, excuse me, sodium channels and sodium potassium pumps to allow sodium to return to the blood. As sodium is returned to the blood, more water will follow. Both of these mechanisms can increase blood volume and work together with the cardiovascular system to retain blood pressure and blood volume. If there are no channels, present in the collecting duct, then this water and sodium reabsorption cannot happen and large volumes of dilute urine will exit the collecting duct. When these channels are present, blood volume will be retained and urine output will be decreased. The last step of the nephron is secretion. So we've talked about returning substances back to the blood through reabsorption. Secretion is specifically removing substances from the blood and putting them into the filtrate for excretion. Substances that need to be secreted can include excess acids, potassium, and ions, including large anions or cations through large carriers. These three processes, glomerular filtration, reabsorption, and secretion ensure that the blood leaving the nephron is regulated and that the filtrate leaving has the needed has the excreted substances that need to be removed from the body. Alright guys, I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions.